Beshem Hashem Nase Ve Naseach in Parashat Kitabo, the Pasuk it starts with the concept of Bikurim. That when a Jew comes to Eres Israel um, and he inherits the Eres Israel, Peri Hadama, he should take from the first produce of, um, of his land and he should uh, bring it to the Kohen. And you should bring it to the place that I'm going to choose. And that you should bring that produce to the Kohen that will be, will be living in the land. And you should tell him, That I have reached here today to the land of Eres uh, Israel because of the kindness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The land that Hashem promised to my uh, fathers, and that Kohen should take that first produce of the land, um, that are the produce, the Sheva Minim that Eretz Israel is praised with, and that he should put it in front of the Mizbeach of Hashem, Mizbeach Hashem, Elukecha, Veanita, Veamata, Lifne Hashem. And that, and then you should say in front of Hashem, uh, the whole Arami Oved Aviv, Ayered Mistaima, the whole history of Bnei Israel, that first we we lived in uh, in, in in Egypt, and we were strangers there, and, and and we became a big nation. Hashem saved us from Eretz Israel, from all that, uh, from Mistaim, from all that hardship, from all that Abu Dakasha. Um, that when we scream to Hashem, Hashem uh, remembered our forefathers and He answered our prayer prayers. So over here, there is something interesting. There is a Rashi in the Pasuk Gimel. Ubata el hakohen asher yeh bayomim hahem ve'amata elav the Rashi and ve'amata elav tells us something very interesting. Our Rav Yisachar friend Sholita brings in the name of uh, Rav Elia Baruch Finkel this question that the Pasuk says you should tell to the Kohen Vamata Elav Shencha Kafui Tova that we should go to say the statement that you're going to say it's in order to show that you are not kafui tova, that you are not, you know, you're not just uh, letting ingrate, you're not being ingrate to Hashem. You're not being ingrate. And this is very familiar to us, this parashiot, these are the parashiot that we say in Haggadah. So the question that comes is why we need to say this parashiot if we want to refer to the history of Ben Israel living in Egypt and all that hardship bring Pesukim from the parashiot Shemot Vayera Bo B'Shalach Why the Baal Haggadah is choosing these Pesukim from the Pasuk of Kitavo? that this individual should say it as a hakarat has tov, as a uh, giving praise to Hashem, this parashiot from parashat kitavo, wouldn't be better to say do from the parashiot in Sefer Shemot. Over there, it goes through the whole history of Exodus. Why Mikra Bikurim, this thanksgiving, has to be from this parasha, parashat kitavo? and not from the other parashiot in Shemot. So, in order to answer this question, we have to understand what is Kafui Tova. Kafui Tova means when there is no recognition of good. So, Maki Tova means somebody who recognizes the good, the blessing. So in other words, Rashi over here is telling us why not say positive? Why say Shencha Kafui Tova? That at least you are not 
you know, ingrate to Hashem. At least you are not ignoring the good that Hashem is giving to you. So the answer to this question is, we can never be makir, toba to Hashem. It is impossible. Hashem does so much good to us that with a few psukim to Hashem, we cannot express our gratitude to Him. It is impossible. At least by saying this Pesukim, you are not a Kafui Tova. You are not an ingrate. So the Sheva and Hoda, praise to Hashem, is not something that we can do. And this is, this is inc- indicated in Nishmat Korchai. So every, every, every Shabbat we recite, as the Pasuk says, Ve'ilu finu male shira chayam. And if our mouths are filled with song, just like the sea, and our tongues is filled with joyous songs, and if if our tongues are filled is filled with joyous songs like roaring waves and our lips with praise like the like the skies like the levels of the skies and our eyes illuminate like the sun and the moon. And our hands are outstretched like the eagles of the skies. And our feet are light as the deers. And anachnu mas pikin lehodot decha Hashem elokeinu. We still could not ad- adequately give thanks to you, Hashem, our our God, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So this is the very important concept of understanding the goodness and the blessings that Hashem gives to us. There are certain individuals that we can never appreciate enough. For example, our parents. They did so so much good to us. Remember all those nights that they stayed up for us? Where their mother feeding the baby, changing diapers, that has no time to it. That is, a real, that is a reality. We can never thank them enough. Raising children. Ilu filu perhaps applies to all the parents. And sometimes there are individuals that they make such a big roshem. They make such a big influence in our lives. We can never thank them enough. But at least we can express our appreciation to them. At least we can, we can avoid being ingrate. So Harav Issachar Fran Shalita brings a story from Briskerav that Briskerav brings from Parashat Ha'azinu. Over there it says Am Naval Hashem Tigmelu Zot Am Naval Referring to Am Israel Am Naval What is Naval? So over there he, he explains Naval Velo Chacham It says Am Naval Naval also refers to Nevela Nevela is like a dead animal Dead animal becomes Nevela a person who is not a makir tov, he is like, you know, animal. 
he sees to be a human being he is amnabal so how much we need to appreciate hashem so that is the concept that briskerov brings now there is a uh, many great sadikim that they all teach us many lessons of uh, makir tova appreciating and appreciation the greater you are the greater appreciation there is to hashem and to others whether you are sephardi ashkenazi hasid litvish chabad it doesn't make a difference so i'm going to over over tell you the two stories that i had both of these stories are with profound lessons one lesson is uh, learned from rabbi of shach alava shalom one day in israel rabbi shach during the winter he calls upon his grandson he tells him please get a cab we need to go to Haifa we need to go to a burial the mitzvah of uh, burying a Jew Levaya so the grandson gets a cab they go there it's freezing cold raining Rav Shach, Alava Shalom, he goes to the caver, he waits there till the burial is done. After the burial, he recites Kaddish, and again he waits there, freezing cold rain, and then he, after a few moments, he leaves. So the grandson asked, who, who is this lady that you came here for? After all, she didn't seem to be a famous lady. Not that many people attended the burial. Would you please explain that I can learn? So Rav Shach, Rav Shalom explains that when I was in a dormitory back then in Europe the dormitory back then wasn't like nowadays that you have a room you have a bed and everything there was a seniority a way that if you were you know older Bakur student you get to have a chair a bench in the shul and that was where you would sleep and there was a rav in the shul that would uh, help us, you know, uh, would give us classes. There was no such a thing as dormitory. And Rav Shach was a younger student, so he did not even have a chair to sleep on. He had to sleep on cold floor, freezing cold in Europe. So after a while he decided, you know, I can't bear all this freezing weather. And he decided to quit being in yeshiva. And uh, especially when a letter came from his uncle, his uncle instructing to him, telling him, you know, I have a business. Why don't you come? I teach you this business. And after I die, you take over this business. So Rav Shach decided to do that. He could not bear that weather. One, one night before he left, a lady comes to the so-called dormitory in the shul and she offers blankets to the students. She says, you know, my husband had a blanket um, shop and he passed away. So I have all these blankets. Whoever wants blankets, I give blankets. Rav Shach got himself two blankets, one to put under and one to put on, on, on himself. And he decided to stay in the yeshiva. And after 
you know, winter was over, he stayed. So who was this lady? Rav Shach said. The lady who we attended the Levaya was that lady. Over 40 years, I tracked her. So as Hakarat Hatov, I decided to come to the burial to show my uh, appreciation to her. Because of, because of her, I stayed in Yeshiva. So the grandson asked, why then Rebbe stayed after residing Kaddish in the freezing cold weather? Avshach responded, because I wanted to remember that coldness, that freezing cold weather in Europe, that I can appreciate what she did for me. That's another profound lesson for appreciation. One of the ways that we can identify a Jew is if they are <coughs> um, appreciate, appreciative. After all, we are called Yehudim because Yehudim come from, uh, Yehu, Yehudi comes from the word Yehuda. Yehuda, Yaakov Avinu's son, Yehuda means giving Hoda, giving praise to Hashem. We always give praise to Hashem. We always. We are always grateful to whoever does good to us. So, there is another story said over by Rabbi Yisachar Fanshari Tamai Rebbe. This story is regarding to Rabbi Yaakov Kamenitsky, Allah Shalom. So, there was a student, a Bakhur, in Yeshiva Torah with the Ad. He had a hard time, a big challenge. Um, in the mornings, he could not wake up for shacharit, for the morning services. No matter how much everyone helped him to get up, it was impossible. So the mashkiach decided to go to Rav Yaakov Kamenitsky, the Rosh Hashiva, to see if it would be appropriate to... Uh, make him leave to throw him out of dormitory because he was making a bad influence to all the all other Bakhurim, all other students. So Rav Yaakov Kamenitsky Allah Shalom agreed with Mashkiach and they decided to uh, let him go of the dormitory. But Rav Yaakov Kamenitsky told Mashkiach, please, before you let him go, ask him to come and see me. So, here they go to him, they tell him, you know, you are out of dormitory, but Rosh Hashiva wants to see you. So this Bakhur goes to Rosh Hashiva, Rosh Hashiva, Rav Yaakov Kamenitsky, Allah Vashanam, asked him, now, tell me, where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to stay? at nights. The Bakhur student said, I don't know. Rosh Hashiva said, why don't you come and stay with me at my home? Uh, to his disbelief, Rosh Hashiva is offering, is offering him a better place, upgrade. So he, he was very curious, this Bakhur. He said, but Kevodarav, I'm being thrown out of yeshiva, of, 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 of the dormitory, sorry. I'm not worthy to come to Rosh Hashiva's home. Why am I getting such an honor? Rav Yaakov Kamenitsky answered, this is the hakarat atov that I have to your grandfather. This is the appreciation that I have to your grandfather. Your grandfather was the one who supported the Kulel that I stayed there for many years. And now it's a, you know, payback time. Time to pay back. And I have to show you my appreciation. Bezat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu should help us that we all appreciate what we have. As the saying goes, when you have something you don't appreciate. When you lose it, when it's not there anymore, 
then you realize what a precious gem you had. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Amen.